Hello, my name is Caroline, and thanks for joining me for this video on a Raspberry Pi 4. I recently made a video where I covered Raspberry Pi 0, Raspberry Pi 3A, and 3B, and I will link to that below. At the time I made the video, the Raspberry Pi 4 wasn't out yet, so now I need to make an update. I'm making my update today, and we're gonna talk about the Raspberry Pi 4. And I will talk about where I purchased this, how I purchased this, and the additional accessories I had to purchase to get this going. Let's get started. Now, thanks for joining me. This video is all about the Raspberry Pi 4. This is the box that it came with. Now, there are three different versions of the Raspberry Pi 4, the one gig, the two gig, and the four gig. And something that I kind of learned as I was going through this process is that I purchased this from my local Micro Center. Now, this video is not sponsored by Micro Center by any stretch of the imagination. I started stalking the Micro Center website to find out when it'd be available and how I could potentially reserve one or how I could buy one from their store. Now, when I went online, I think it was last Thursday, I saw that they were selling them. You could reserve them on their website. But at the point at which I put in my order, they have the three models, the one gig, the two gig, the four gig. They only had the one gig available and it said two gig and four gig were sold out. Okay, so I went ahead and just reserved my one gig. And then I drove over to the store to do the pickup. When I got there, I looked at the Micro Center website on my phone. Between the time I, I put in my reservation and the time I got there, they had gotten in some Raspberry Pi 4, four gig models. Now I am continuing just to look at the Micro Center website just so that I could make this video. And every time I've looked at it, once I got home, the four was sold out. I continue to monitor the website. They only have the ones, generally speaking, in stock. And then the two gig and the four gig are generally sold out. I would recommend that you just continue to look at the website if having a four or a two is important to you. They will get them in stock and then you can reserve it once it comes in. I, hopefully that's helpful to you. When you buy this Raspberry Pi 4 at Micro Center, it's just the board. This is the box that came in. So you just get the, the computer literally itself. That's all that comes in this box. Well, some safety information comes in this box, some literature, but none of the dongles or power cables that you need are included. But let's talk about other things that you need in order to get this to work. The power cable, everybody's really excited about power. We're no longer using micro USB power anymore. Power for a Raspberry Pi 4 is actually USB-C. And generally speaking, from what I've seen on the internet, everybody's really excited about that. I know I was excited about that. I am actually using the same power cable, which is USB-C, that I use on my iPad Pro. That is compatible. So I did not purchase a new power adapter when I purchased my Raspberry Pi, just because I knew I could use the one for my iPad Pro. And I had an extra one from my iPad Pro that was ready to go. So that is what I'm doing for power. Next, the big thing that we like to talk about when it comes to the Raspberry Pi 4 is that there are two micro HDMI ports. That means it supports two monitors, which means this is more of a desktop type computer situation. And I love having the two monitors, the dual screen capabilities for a Raspberry Pi 4, because generally speaking, what I'm doing when I'm working with my Raspberry Pi 4 is I am following a tutorial on one screen and on the other screen, then I can actually do the tutorial. So one screen can be open to the website where I'm following a tutorial and the other screen can be open to Genie or whatever I'm using to code that. The only problem is it's a micro HDMI and not a regular full size HDMI. What does that mean? For your regular computer, you usually use this HDMI cable. It's a full size HDMI. That's great. That's not gonna fit in your Raspberry Pi 4. It's a micro, so that means you need an adapter. That actually means you need two adapters for your Raspberry Pi 4 for each monitor. I did purchase those aftermarket. I went on Amazon and purchased them. They were pretty cheap. They're about $7 each on Amazon. And it looks something like this. And I'm just gonna show you over here. I am going to plug in the micro HDMI into HDMI zero. And then from there you plug in the HDMI cable. And that is how you get the HDMI going. 
I'm just going to do one monitor just to start and then we'll, we'll get into the second monitor. But I, from my understanding, HDMI zero, which you can see on this board is the main output. Next, we need to talk about the operating system. I like to use Raspbian OS, which you can download from the Raspbian website. I showed you how to do that in the previous video where I talked about Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi Zero. Now I have flashed the Raspbian operating system onto a micro SD card that did not come in the box. I purchased this micro SD card separately. This part was kind of fun for me. Next, you'll need a case for your Raspberry Pi. Now, this is absolutely optional as part of the project. Micro Center was nice enough to send out an email with a link to an STL file for your Raspberry Pi 4 that fits perfectly. And I took them up on their free STL file and I printed out the top and bottom. Place your Raspberry Pi down into the bottom piece and then you'll insert your micro SD card into the device. Don't pull it out without first removing the micro SD card as you could break your micro SD card and then you can snap on the top of the case and it should just snap right together. Uh, now I'm gonna take it off for a second because there is another step before we put it in the case uh, which is I watched this video from my friend Don at Nova Spirit before I started making this video and he made a really good point about the Raspberry Pi 4 gets really hot like literally it's really really warm after running it for just a few minutes without actually running any programs on it uh, so I went on Amazon and I purchased some heat sinks. Now at the time at which I went on Amazon, they didn't have heat sinks specific for the Raspberry Pi 4. I just bought some heat sinks for, I guess, a Raspberry Pi 3. And that is this little package here. I will link to this below. And I'm going to attach some heat sinks to my Raspberry Pi 4 now. This is their adhesive on the bottom. And I'll just stick that down. And hopefully adding heat sinks will help with the heat management, but it does get really, really hot. And so I've put down my heat sinks, got it in the case. I will close up the case again, snap back on this case. I've got my micro SD card. I've got my micro HDMI connected. I need a mouse and keyboard. So that I've got a dongle for that. I will be inserting that. Now I'm gonna insert it on this side. The side with the blue is actually the USB 3.0. I think I'm just using a, just a regular USB with my mouse and keyboard. So I'm just gonna insert it on this side. And then of course, let's not forget about the power. I'm ready to power this up with my USB-C. And there it goes. It's going to turn itself on. And then I'm going to turn on this monitor and you'll see this monitor come up. So we're just going to do a one monitor to start off with just to walk through the wizard. And we're just going to walk through the very simple setup that we use to set up a brand new Raspbian operating system on a Raspberry Pi 4. It's going to look very, very similar to what you saw with a Raspberry Pi 3. And it says, welcome to the desktop. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna choose my country, United States, American English, and my time zone, New York. I'm gonna use a US keyboard, use English language, hit next. And I'm setting up my location and I need to change the password. Now I'm searching for the Wi-Fi network and I'll set up the Wi-Fi and I'll type in my password. Now I'm ready to update the software and it's gonna check for updates. Now this is going to take a while to complete. I'd recommend just setting it aside and coming back and checking on it. Now that took a few minutes to update our Raspbian system, but it is up to date now. We've got a message saying so. I'm gonna click OK, and it is going to prompt me to restart my Raspberry Pi. What I'm gonna do instead is I am going to go to shutdown, and I am just gonna shut this down here. Why am I doing that? I'm going to connect my second monitor, and when it comes up, it should come up on both monitors now. Let's do that. It has shut down. And now I'm ready to plug in my second monitor. And the same thing applies. I've got a regular HDMI cable. I've put on the HDMI to micro HDMI converter now. And first of all, I'm gonna unplug the USB-C power to my Raspberry Pi 4 and then plug in the second monitor and then replug in the power cable for my Raspberry Pi 4. And hopefully both of my monitors will come up now. 
and now they're both up is what it looks like when you have both monitors working and the primary screen is the screen that has your little raspberry menu in the upper left hand corner this is hdmi 1 or hdmi 0 this is the in the input when you plugged it in and this is my second screen over here so if you'll notice if i move my cursor if i move my cursor all the way to the left of this screen it only goes up to here but if i want to get onto that screen i need to move it all the way to the right and then the cursor moves over here so really i should have this monitor on this side i should have the monitors swapped on either side now there is a way to configure this instead of moving the monitors around i'm going to go to my raspberry pi menu and then go into preferences and then go down the screen configuration and from there it's hdmi 1 hdmi 2 hopefully you can see this and what i'm going to do is just move one over and move the other one over so hdmi 2 is going to go on the left now HDMI 1 is going to go on the right and I'm going to click the check mark and then it says screen updated. Are you happy with this? I'm going to click OK. And so now the primary screen is on the left and the secondary screen is on the right. And if I move my mouse, it moves smoothly from the left screen to the right screen. We can close that menu here. The other thing I'd like to do is not have the same picture, background picture on both screens. From here, you want to press the Raspberry Pi menu button preferences and then appearance settings and from here you've got desktop one which is this one and you can change the picture let's change the picture to cloud.jpg hit open and now you've got the clouds and then desktop two which is this screen over here let's choose a different picture let's pick the islands Dot jpeg click open and i should see islands all right that looks like clouds let's choose something different let us choose mountain open and now you see a mountain so now you can see two different things uh, i've got the trash icon on both of my screens here you can always remove your waste basket from desktop two or desktop one i'm going to click ok and now i've got the dual screen mode going it looks great i'm excited about that and that is a basic setup for the Raspberry Pi 4. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you'll join me next time. Bye now.